there are lots of charts, graphs, and diagrams that we can use to show relationships within our data. And we've already seen, for example, the scatter plot from Brittany Fong just a few days ago, where we had an x-axis and a y-axis and dots in the middle. But we can also change the overall structure or the look of the space that we're using. So in today's video from Amelia Wattenberger from The Pudding, we're going to look at the radar chart in which we're going to use, instead of a vertical axis and a horizontal axis, we're going to wrap everything around a circle. So I'm going to hand it over to Amelia so you can learn more about the radar chart. Hey, so I wanted to talk to you about radar charts. So oftentimes you'll have a data set where you have a lot of different metrics and you kind of just want a footprint for each of the data points. Um, say you want to look for patterns between individual data points, um, but you wanted to compare them on many different variables. So in my book, Full Stack D3, we're analyzing a weather data set, and this is daily weather for an entire year. And as you can imagine, each day has so many metrics, say, wind speed, air pressure, humidity, uh, moon phase. Um, there are about 20 metrics for each of these days. And you might want to ask the data set, are there, are there patterns among these days? Are there footprints that kind of look similar? Do days in the summer have a specific footprint and days in the winter look very different? Um, so let's look at what this might look like. So this is a radar chart of a single day. So this is January 7th, 2018. Uh, this is the New York City weather. Um, so a radar chart has many different spokes. Uh, it goes in a circle and each of these spokes is a different axis. So um, this uh, north facing spoke is an axis showing the wind bearing for the day. And this next one is the moon phase. And this third one is the pressure. So each of these has its own dimension. This is its own axis. Um, at the bottom here, we have humidity. And then in the center, you'll see this um, kind of a shape, a filled in area that goes up each of these axes depending on how high the value is for each of these values. So you can see for January 7th, um, it was, uh, the moon was almost through its cycle. It had a lot of pressure in the air. It was slightly humid, um, but there wasn't much wind. It was pretty cold, as you can imagine, in New York City. Um, so often what people will do with these radar charts is they'll uh, pile a few different of these shapes on top of each other. Here I'm just iterating through the days and you can kind of see how each day has its own distinct shape. And so either uh, animating the chart or piling a few different shapes on top of each other is a really nice way to compare. But once you have more than three days or three shapes to compare, or five maybe, it gets really crowded in here. So if you have a lot of different um, radar chart shapes to compare, you could also do a small multiples where if we look at this, this is a few days in June and on the bottom a few days in November and you can kind of see the shapes on the bottom are uh, have a distinct profile and the shapes on the top have a little bit of a distinct profile where uh, maybe these left two are a little bit different than these right two. Um, you don't really want to use a radar chart when you want to have very precise comparisons of, say, the temperature and the wind bearing. That's th the uh, human visual system is going to have a hard time comparing how far up this line the, the area is and how far up compared to this other line. Um, we can see because of this tick mark around that this wind bearing is a little bit higher, but it's still pretty hard. You're going to be better off for precise comparisons as with something like a bar chart or something um, with a straight line as opposed to a circular layout. Um, but it is really nice for getting really quick uh, glimpses of like footprints of different data points. So. One example that I really like is the New York Times did this analysis of uh, metrics for different songs from different decades. So 
we can see here are a few songs from uh, uh, maybe this year, I'm not sure what year, maybe 2018. And we can see that the radar has five spokes. This top one is loudness, energy, danceability, acousticness, and valence. I think they got this from the Spotify data set. And you kind of get a sense of what songs are different than others. We can see Psycho um, has a lot more acousticness than all of these other songs, whereas there is a cluster of a few songs here that are a little bit, um, they're very loud, but for the other metrics, they're um, pretty medium. <laughs> like they have medium energy, they have medium valence. So it's nice to see which uh, songs are similar to each other. And they also did this thing where they made a different chart for songs of different years. So you can see that um, the profile of songs in 2011 is pretty different than the profile of songs in 1988. And this is, this is where radar charts really shine. It's good to get like just a quick sense of how these are different. Whereas I think in this next slide, they move those radar charts to something more two dimensional. They move it to a scatter plot where I think radar charts are great for getting a quick sense. And then once you some, need something a little bit more precise, it's nice to move towards something like a scatter plot or something with uh, linear dimensions. And thanks, Amelia, for that great review of the radar chart and how it's used and how it looks. So hopefully you can now go out there and try to use the radar chart in your own work. So come back tomorrow and we'll learn more about ways to visualize relationships in our data.